What's going on you guys and welcome back to the channel. I know we've been a little bit slow on the videos for the past couple of weeks. If anybody did notice that, I had a pretty crazy couple of weeks moving or moving things around and I actually just got settled into my new apartment, a new home there. So appreciate the messages for those of you that did notice the lack of videos, but we are back in action. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about more or less a mistake. I don't want to call it a mistake, but it's something that I feel is worth addressing when it comes to dividend investing for Canadians. And it's actually become uh, so apparent online and especially on YouTube in the comment section and whatnot. I think it's time to kind of address this topic and I'll preface the video by saying today I'm sharing with you guys my opinion. That's what I try to do here on this channel is just share with you the way I like to approach investing. That doesn't mean that it has to be the, the way that you invest. In fact, it probably won't be. You can absolutely have a different opinion than me. That's absolutely fine. But I wanna share with you guys my opinion when it comes to withholding tax on your US dividends because it's getting borderline insane how many times I'm seeing this online and the things I'm starting to hear about investors, how they're approaching this withholding tax. If you're not familiar with dividend withholding tax, foreign withholding tax, I have actually done a video completely on it for beginners. So that may be a good video to watch if you have literally no idea what I'm talking about. I'll assume that you have a little bit of knowledge. Very simply, when you own a dividend, uh, when you own a US company that pays a dividend, because that company is based outside of Canada, it's a foreign company, those dividends are subject to a withholding tax. And in the TFSA, what you often hear about, this is regarding the TFSA, because it's supposedly a tax-free account. You always hear about TFSA, you can buy stocks and dividends and interest income, it all doesn't matter. The dividends do, however, they get 15% withheld at source. So basically, when you receive a dividend from a US company, like let's say Coca-Cola, you're actually receiving 15% less than the entire dividend because the IRS over in the States, it's a US company, they say, hey, we're gonna keep a little bit of this. They send you the other 85% essentially. So I'll clarify, you're not paying uh, any tax out of pocket, like you're not writing a check for this tax or you don't have to fill out any crazy forms or anything uh, in the TFSA. It's just that you're receiving 15% less than you would if, um, in an apples to apples comparison, it was a Canadian stock that was paying that dividend. And where I am starting to see, or where I'm feeling a little bit of trouble, um, issue I guess you could say, is a lot of investors are now saying, as they're catching wind of this withholding tax, is that I don't wanna invest in US stocks, I don't wanna buy a US stock, I don't wanna buy a US dividend stock, because I have to pay a 15% withholding tax on those dividends. And I think that that is a, there's a little bit, I think it's great in a sense that you are worrying about these things. It's smart for an investor to be seeing where can I save money? Where can I cut costs and be aware of uh, things such as taxes and uh, commissions and whatnot, these minor fees, they do add up over time. So it's great that you are worrying about that but I don't think that it should be the main priority that you're looking at when it comes to selecting stocks. And I actually came across a post on Facebook, which actually was the motivation for this video. I saw a girl actually pop it up on the screen for you guys, uh, Jane, on a different uh, Facebook group saying, I'm surprised how much attention is given to the withholding tax in the TFSA, right? There's no free lunch. You pay dividends on tax no matter what the account is, and 15% is, is as low as it gets, unless you are in a very low tax bracket. The TFSA, blah, 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 blah. She goes on to basically say, why is this such a high point of emphasis to the point where people are literally, and I get this from time to time, not from time to time, I get this a lot, I'm not gonna buy US stocks in my TFSA. It's just not worth paying the 15% withholding tax or uh, I'm just not gonna invest in, you know, I'm gonna stick with Canadian stocks to get started because I don't wanna pay the 15% withholding tax. Again, just my personal opinion that I'm sharing with you today, guys, um, doesn't mean that you have to believe in this, but why would that, the 15% of your dividend being withheld, be the top priority 
to the point where you would then block out the greatest market in the world. Um, I believe the U.S. market is far superior than the Canadian market. I think it's really the best market that you can invest in in general, overall. And as a Canadian, why would you neglect that market because of a little withholding tax on the dividend? Let me um, clarify. You're not paying 15% on your entire profit. You're not paying 15% on your capital gains. Um, Assuming you're holding this in the TFSA, you're still receiving the dividend just 15% less. If you were gonna receive a dollar dividend, you'd receive 85 cents. And we've talked about this saying on the channel before. If you've been riding along with the channel for a long time, you've heard uh, me say this, us say this. You don't let the tax tail wag the dog. And what that saying basically goes on to, uh, what the meaning behind that is, when it comes to selecting an investment, your first priority, priority number one, top priority is the investment itself. And then secondarily, you worry about tax. That comes after the investment. You don't come into it thinking, well, where can I save the most on taxes? And then go select an investment that kind of filters into that. You look at your scope of investments out there, and if you can find a great one, the investment is objective number one, and then you try to minimize taxes secondarily. And that really kind of sums up the issue that I'm seeing out there, because if you ask me a well-balanced portfolio, if you looked at the TFSA, for example, you said, this is my account here. This is a tax sheltered account that we get to use as Canadians. You only get to put so much in there. There's literally a maximum of room that you can contribute a maximum space you can use for your TFSA. And you're going to say, well, I'm going to neglect a ton of amazing stocks because I'm going to be receiving 15% less of the withholding tax. Ask yourself, does that really make a bunch of sense? And hey, maybe to you it does. But if you look at the statistics, US stocks in general, have always outperformed over long periods of time, have always outperformed Canadian stocks. The US market is bigger. Uh, there's yeah more people there. There's better companies. There's just more demand for their products relative to Canadian stocks. Uh, the Canadian market actually is, when you look at it, it is quite narrow. Like it's quite uh, specified in what we do here in Canada. We have the financial companies, the banks. We have energy companies. Um, Suncores and in Canas or not in Canada anymore, Huskies and whatnot. You have your material stocks like gold and copper miners, and then maybe like industrials like uh, the railways, for example. But aside from that, the Canadian market is actually relatively like niche, it's relatively narrowed in or narrow focused compared to the U.S. market. And that's why actually, if we looked at just the broader market or the indices returns, the S and P has averaged somewhere like seven to eight percent. Whereas the TSX, I believe, is in that five to six percent range, about a two percentage point difference. So, factoring that in, does it not sound crazy to say I'm gonna block out that market because I'm gonna receive 15% less of a dividend? As an investor, you have to approach every stock or every investment, not just stock, this is real estate, any type of investment, you wanna look at the investment as your total return. What it what can I get for this investment? What am I going to get out of this total? And if you have a US stock and you're going to receive 15% less of the dividend, but the gain, the capital gain is going to be a whole, there's so much more potential than a Canadian stock, that may be the better choice, again, depending on each investor. But in many cases, your total return can be better from, uh, you know, take a company like Apple, for example. Apple's a stock that pays a dividend. It's done tremendously well. It's been a great uh, appreciator. It's done. It's obviously it's Apple, um, largest company in the world, maybe the second largest. I've got investors that will say, well, I don't want to hold that in my TFSA because it because of a 15% uh, withholding tax on dividends. And you know, to kind of wrap up this video, I, I I said that like five times already. But to kind of wrap up this video, prior to this, I was thinking of an analogy. I was thinking of a number of analogies. I'm like, what would be a good way to explain this? And the one that I kind of landed on was if you are somebody that was on a diet, right? If you're trying to slim down, right? Or let's say you're a bodybuilder trying to cut down, for example, and you're, you're trying to lose some weight. And nutritionists will, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, uh, you know, health people will know better than I do. But the equivalent I kind of draw is somebody who's trying to lose weight 
is so focused on the little things, like the the peripheral nutrients, like vitamins and um, you know your sodium and your iron and your. I'm not trying to say those aren't important. They're of course important to a healthy lifestyle. But what what if you're so worried about you know your vitamin B or vitamin D um, intake, and you're totally neglecting your calories and uh, your macronutrients like your carbs and your uh, fats and proteins, kind of like the big stuff. You're so worried about the little stuff. That is to me the way I look at it when someone says, well, I don't want to invest in a US company because of the 15% withholding tax. You need to be worrying about the the meat first, the you know the big stuff, and then the tax comes in secondarily. And again, at the end of the day, you just have to ask yourself, where can I get the best return for my money overall? And if you looked at my portfolio, my TFSA for that matter, I have a healthy dose of US stocks because I have some phenomenal US companies and I'm okay with them withholding 15% of my dividend if the rest of the company is gonna do really well. So that is just my personal opinion on this. Um, I could really cut the video short there. I just thought it was worth coming out because I know, uh, really, I get, I get comments on this Really, it seems like every day someone talking about withholding tax and I just wanted to share my perspective on it. It doesn't mean that you have to buy into that. If you're someone that is really focused, all you care about is dividends and you wanna look at it in a glass scope and you said, I have what I have a stock here. Um, if you were to look at it in that sense and say, I have a stock that's paying me a, a dividend, should I hold it in my TFSA or my RRSP? Yes, it's correct to say that if it's a U.S. stock, you would receive 15% more in the RRSP because it's a re- it's a retirement account. They're actually not subject to the 15% withholding tax. But do you want to be that nitpicky and just split up your investments totally? Say, you know, all my Canadian stocks in TFSA, all my U.S. stocks in RRSP. If you want to go to that extent to do it, you can. But to me, it's just not worth the hassle. I'm an investor that likes to do things simple. I like to keep it simple. That's one of our principles that we cover um, in our academy. We, we have the keep it simple principle, the kiss, kiss principle. Keep it simple, silly, or keep it simple, blank. Point being is that if you want to stress about that stuff, you surely can. It's just not my top priority. I'd rather look at other things. And yeah, I've already said that a few times uh, in this video. So I think we can wrap it up there. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this. Uh, I know we'll have some mixed opinions on it. And if you want to make a argument for the other side, feel free to leave it down below. Because again, you very well may may be right. Um, You can save money in certain areas by doing certain things. It's just not the way that I personally like to invest. It's not worth the hassle for me. But do leave a comment down below with your thoughts. If you did enjoy, uh, if you agree with my thoughts, or if you just appreciate the video in general, you can give this one a thumbs up. That is a great way to support the channel. Uh, Really helps out a ton. You can subscribe if you are new here and you've made it around to this far in the video, uh, just hearing my thoughts. And just FYI, I know we're coming up on 70,000 subscribers. So for anybody that has been uh, supporting the channel since the beginning, or just anytime, if you've watched through this long in the video, really do appreciate the support. That's a crazy milestone. And I'm here back settled in to make that push for the 100k mark. So I'm super, super amped for that. And you can expect more videos. So subscribe if you're not already subscribed. We do, of course, have our investing academy. If you are a beginner uh, investor, if you're a beginner here in Canada and you want some help with learning the stock market, excuse me, learning how to set up your accounts and to learn the terms and how to build a portfolio properly with the right balances, Uh, between the different areas and how to look for stocks and all that stuff you can click the first link down below to check out our academy we can walk you through step by step through the entire process we've helped hundreds of canadians do it we're working with them every single day you get to join our community it's honestly pretty cool that'll be that first link down below but as always i thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed and i will see you in the next video